Law students, my name is Marco Brown. I own Brown Family Law in Salt Lake City. And we have recently decided that we're going to hire law clerks. This is a video about that, about who we are as a law firm, about what we expect from law clerks, about the purpose of the program, and about the benefits to you as a law clerk. So let's kind of get into this and start going through it. First, I want to say thank you for showing interest in uh, becoming a law clerk with Brown Family Law. I know you got a lot of options, and I hope to make this a good experience for you and a really beneficial experience for you. I think we provide things that other law firms will simply not provide you and training that, that other law firms simply won't provide you that will really help you in your law school experience as well as when you go to interview with law firms after you, you graduate to get your first job. So let's get into this uh, history. So I went to the University of Nebraska and graduated with distinction. I clerked after that for a year, then took a job with an insurance defense company. Terrible idea. Don't, don't do that. Worst job I ever had. So that's in 2000, I graduated in 2007, decided to come back here to Utah in 2010 because my wife wanted to get a doctorate at the University of Utah. So we came back here. 2010, not a good year for law uh, young attorneys, law students, anybody. Large firms were shutting down in Chicago, New York, LA, Miami. It's after, right after the Great Recession, not good. So we come here, I tried to get a job at a law firm and nobody was hiring, so I just decided to start my own. That was rough. Spent a lot of years kind of walking in the wilderness and uh, trying to make things work. So thankfully it has by the hand of Providence. You know, it's worked out. We've helped thousands of people at this point. We're a large and growing family law firm. But uh, those first years were, were very difficult. And my purpose in, in hiring attorneys now and hiring law clerks now is to train them so they don't go through that process that so kind of you know, teach them like hey what what did I do wrong so they don't have to replicate that in their own lives and live off like twenty four thousand dollars a year like I did when I when I first started okay so that's a short history of Brown Law. Uh, at this point though we kind of take you to present day I believe we have eight or nine attorneys right now helped around 4,000 people through the divorce and child custody process here in Utah. We're starting a new, uh, in a new state this year, we'll, we'll go into Arizona and then we'll expand into other states as well. So that is the trajectory of where Brown Family Law is going. Okay, how we do things, we do things somewhat differently than other law firms and especially other family law firms number one thing for us is communication so number one complaint people have with, with attorneys in general and divorce attorneys in particular is they call and they can't get a call back or the email and they can't get an email back communication is the number one problem that attorneys have and it leads to lots of bar complaints you can talk about this in your ethics classes and it leads to lots of just you know really upset clients and that leads to a huge amount of stress for attorneys and for paralegals and for attorneys families so I just thought hey look I'm just gonna solve this problem so we have solved this problem so every Friday it's Friday I'm making this video right now my attorneys are calling every client so every client gets a call every Friday then every Wednesday the paralegal texts the client sees how they're doing answers any questions you know, we're giving updates all the time. And these Friday calls are in addition to all the normal communication that the client has with their legal team. So, you know, if they talk on a Tuesday with the attorney, they're gonna talk again on a Friday, get updates, have questions answered. Again, I figured, hey man, th this is the number one problem that people have with attorneys, so why don't I just solve it? And we've solved it here. And it, uh, it, it really leads to satisfied clients we have over 300 five-star reviews on google at this point so we've kind of figured something out and it's incredibly important to us we work everything as a team so we sit down with each other we quality control each other's work we strategize with one another we talk all the time we are you know in constant communication as a team 
the attorneys talk with the paralegals, the paralegals talk with the, with the attorneys, the paralegals are given reign to, uh, to tell the attorney if they're, if they're wrong, okay? A lot of times in a lot of law firms, especially large hierarchical ones, the paralegal is just a lackey here. I don't, I don't really buy into that at all. When I first started, I had a paralegal that just left us this last year. She was with me for a very long time, and I gave her license to tell me when I messed up, okay? And I think that is incredibly important. So that's the relationship the paralegals have with the attorneys. Uh, but we do everything as a team and we like each other. That, that's another big part of this. You can go again to these large sclerotic law firms and they, um, they don't really like each other. The attorneys don't really talk. They don't, they don't really enjoy each other. They don't enjoy what they're doing. It's a different, different environment. Uh, I get to pick the people I work with and I like all the people I work with and, and we enjoy each other. So it's a big, big benefit. We only do one thing here. We do divorce, and we do child custody cases. About 80% of it, this is divorce. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is we're gonna be better at this than everybody else who does divorce. That's just the way I, I wanted to do it. That, and I'm not that bright a guy, so I never really wanted to do like three things and be kind of mediocre at all of them. I just wanted to do one thing and learn it really, really well and be better than everybody else at it. Okay. Some of the other things, we have a lot of goodwill with the courts because we go and we volunteer with them so they, so they know, like, and trust us when we go before them on our cases. We're very respectful to law clerks, uh, sorry, court clerks. We're very respectful to our colleagues as well, to mediators. Like, I've tried for over a decade now that I've been doing this to cultivate these relationships to be respected within the community. Uh, in fact, we are about to have our team meeting and during the team meeting, we are gonna talk about other colleagues, other attorneys that we can send thank yous to, right? Or mediators that we can send thank yous to. And then we're gonna talk about clients that we can send thank yous to. Do they, do they need a little pick me up, right? Does somebody have a baby or whatever it is. Uh, earlier this week, I have, a, I have an attorney acquaintance in Ohio who just had a son. So we sent him a onesie. Right, we have this kind of standard onesie we send people. So it's that sort of thing because we care about our colleagues and we care about making the legal landscape here in Utah a little bit better by being nice to people. So that, that is a big, big thing. Easiest way to get fired here at Brown Law is to be a jerk. Right, Dylan? Right, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That, I tell everybody that. that. That is the easiest way, so gotta be nice. Okay, so what is the purpose of the law clerk program? I'm gonna be totally upfront about this. The purpose of the law clerk program for us is to identify young and develop young talent in law students and with the hopes of hiring those law students after law school. What we found in this environment, you know, post COVID is that it's become increasingly difficult to find good young talent. So we've decided to go to the law schools in order to develop it. So that is, that is the purpose. So it's not like other places where, you know, it's a one and done sort of thing. If you get on this track, we want to develop you. And if you're good, we absolutely want to have you come work for us if the spot is, is open and we're an expanding firm. So we're at this point kind of always, always hiring. Okay. The expectations of a law clerk. I have this on my computer. That's why I'm looking over here to support attorneys and paralegals to, and, and what that means is you get to do what the attorneys and the paralegals tell you to do, to be honest. Uh, communicate with clients, so there's gonna be direct client communication, draft both perfunctory and substantive documents. Look, you're, you're gonna start on the perfunctory documents, okay, and then you're gonna graduate up to the substantive, uh, more difficult legal argument documents. Right. This is just the progression in law firms. So that's, uh, that's what you can expect. You're also going to learn to sell and close clients. Okay, this is where we are very different from essentially all other law firms that have law clerk programs. 
You can go other places. They are not going to teach you how to sell, and they are not going to teach you how to close clients. They will not teach you how to acquire clients. They will not teach you anything about the business of law. Your law professors, bless their little bureaucratic souls, have no idea how to do that either. Okay, They won't teach you because they have no concept of it. This, I think, is the largest failing that uh, legal education has in the United States. And there are lots of failings in legal education, but this is, the, this is the biggest failing, okay? In legal education, they take you and they teach you the language of law and they teach you how to think like a lawyer. And that's great and that's very, very useful, but that does not put money in your pocket and does not pay for your mortgage and does not help your family, okay? I absolutely believe that is a travesty, okay? The number one reason people go to law school is to help people and to make money, okay? And make money is the first, help people is the second. I firmly believe that and I'm going to teach everybody in this, in this program to make money and to acquire clients. And that, that is how we do it, is we acquire clients. So you're gonna learn to sell and you're gonna learn to close clients, okay? And if you don't work for us, you can take that knowledge and you can go somewhere else, but that is going to make you absolutely marketable because the thing they don't tell you in law school is that lawyers don't work for lawyers, lawyers work for rainmakers, okay? The more you can show a law firm that you can make them money, the more likely you are to get hired. So you're gonna learn sales, you're gonna learn close, closing, and you're gonna learn how to acquire clients. You're also going to attend, to do this, you're gonna attend daily sales meetings. So at 8.30 every day, we have a sales meeting. We go through sales training. We do role plays on uh, overcoming objections and how to get clients to hire us. So that is mandatory, 8.30 every day, Monday through Friday. Like I said, you're gonna learn the business of law, and that is sales and closing, but you're also gonna learn you know, how we bill, how the law firm actually functions, what money is necessary, how advertising works. Like, again, this is a very, very big thing for me. So I'm going to personally tutor people in, in this as they go through the, the law clerk program. Okay, you're also gonna prepare for and attend mediations, court hearings. Uh, so you're really gonna get that hands-on work and hands-on experience that is so vital to, um, to young attorneys. You know, the, one of the things I really hated about insurance defense was I just sat behind a desk and I would get into court like every six months. So our attorneys get into court weekly, at least once a week, mediations usually multiple times a week to get things done for our clients. So you're gonna get that hands-on experience. And then you're gonna bill for your work, okay? This is an expectation. So I'm here to make money. Uh, for my family and for my team. I take this very, very seriously, providing for my team. And you, that means that I'm going to pay you because I don't believe in indentured servitude. And that means that you're gonna bill for the work you do. So you're gonna learn that aspect. Okay, now the benefits to you, we pay you, all right? <laughs> and this is, again, this is why you bill. So a lot of places, they, they don't pay you for internships. Uh, I just th I think that's dumb. So you do the work, you're going to get paid for it. Okay. You will learn all aspects of a law firm. Okay. You are going to do perfunctory work, and then you're going to graduate. But you're going to learn all of the aspects of, of the law firm, from writing documents to communicating, how to effectively communicate with clients. Like I said, the sales and closing aspect, the business aspect interacting with judges and commissioners aspect, interacting with other, you know, with your colleagues, other attorneys, you're gonna learn all that. Get hands-on experience with clients, mediation, and court, okay? You'll learn how to work as a team, and then, as I stated before, you'll learn the sales and the business of law, okay? So these are the benefits to you, and my entire point with this, other than to, again, identify talent, to develop talent, and to hire talent at a law school, is to give you the tools that you will need to get a good job. So even if you don't work with us, you are going to know what law firms really look for in law students and how to use that and how to parlay that into a job that you actually want.
Hey, last part of the video here. I'm gonna talk about my family for a minute and talk about what I've learned from my family because it really does inform how we do things here at the office. So I'm gonna show you a photo of my son. This is Elliot. He is 14 years old. We're, uh, I'm his adopted dad. And a little bit of the, the story here, my wife and I were never able to have our own biological kids, so we go through the adoption process. We are at Elliot's birth. Biological mom invited us to that, so we go. He's born, and I feed him his first bottle. I am hooked, right? I love this kid. I am hooked. I bond immediately with him. And about 14 hours later, bio mom changes her mind. Absolutely no fault to her at all. This woman is a hero. Okay, I love this woman. And I would have done the exact same thing, to be honest with you. I don't think I'd ever been able to give up my, my kid. But she changes her mind. And that is an extraordinarily painful emotional process, both for her, right, and you know, for us. Because I bonded, I really felt like I lost my son. So my wife and I, we did our crying. And then we had to, we had to leave and we had to go back to where we were living. I thought we'd lost our boy. Then a few days later, the social worker calls up and says, hey, my mom changed her mind. She said she made a huge mistake. She wants you to come get him. Are you still interested? And I thought, of course we're still interested, right? So then we go and get him. And uh, we adopt him, and, and that was 14 years ago. And it has been an absolute pleasure over the last 14 years to be his dad and to have him in the family and to learn from him and to learn as a family, a whole bunch of things, right? To walk this path together. And a couple of the things that I have learned and, and have been reiterated to me during this process is, um, is what I'm gonna talk about now and it really does inform how we do things in, in the office. Now we have more kids than just LA. We have a couple of little IVF kids as well because again, we've never been able to have our own biological kids so we, have to, we had to do IVF. And we have a three-year-old and a one-year-old at this point. I'm 45 years old. I do not, for the record, suggest that you have a three-year-old and a one-year-old when you're 45. That, you can do it if you want, but uh, it, it, not ideal. Let's put it that way. So we have these three kids. Um, and really what I've learned and what's been reiterated to me by being Elliot's dad, uh, first thing is equality. Okay, It's reiterated to me that he's equal to everybody else. Like he's equal to our white kids and our white kids are equal to him. He's equal to every child, okay? And that's super, super important. All he wants is to be treated the same as everyone else. And that is what I do. That's the way I treat people, treat them equally. Also, the importance of equality of opportunity is so incredibly important, okay? That everybody receive that same opportunity to excel and to succeed. And then I'm a lawyer and I love the Constitution, equal protection under the law and the 14th Amendment, I think is so important. We've had experiences that uh, have reiterated that to me. So that is super important. So really, it's a quality, right? Believe in it, practice it every day, okay? Then the second thing is excellence. So again, what, what Elliot has reiter reiterated to me and Tommy is that every, for each individual human soul, has the same propensity, has the same kind of spark, regardless of race, color, anything really, for excellence, to be excellent, okay? What matters is content of character. What matters is excellence and merit of work, right? Those are the things that we believe in. Excellence is what I expect of myself, Excellence is what I expect of my team. And excellence is what is expected of us by our clients. We're divorce attorneys. We meet people at the literally the worst time in their life, okay? Their lives are just train wrecks for the most part. And our job is to come in and help them and manage a train wreck. Our job is to help maximize the time they get with their kids and to maximize their money. And to do this, we have to be excellent at what we do, okay? So we treat our clients really well, we serve them exceptionally, we treat our colleagues really well, we treat the clerks of the court really well, 
we, we've done all of these things, but excellence is what is required to do this at a very high level. That is what I expect of myself, and that is what I expect of every member of my team. So, again, I believe in excellence, and I believe in equality, and my family has taught me uh, these things and reiterated these things to me. That's why they're important. So, we're at, the, we're at the end here. If you believe in these things, you want the challenge of what we offer, you want the opportunities of what we offer, you want a place where you can come and we all like each other and banner about and, and really enjoy each other, you want to serve people exceptionally well during times when they really need to be served well, and you want the opportunities that this law clerk program provides, I would love to talk to you.